Hey guys, it's Kelly and welcome back to my channel. Today I am so excited because we are doing a Land Rover Defender 130 tour and like first impression, it freaking smacks. I am so excited to be in this vehicle. I've been driving it for a few days as a mom of three and we have lots of thoughts to share. I have my husband behind the camera and uh, filling in for my sister who just had a baby and we are at a farm. We thought we would take this thing as often and as I'm comfortable with, which is a hayfield. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. If this is your first time joining me, hey, I'm Kelly and I'm the car mom. I review cars for moms and for families. I'm a mom of three and a certified child passenger safety tech. All right, let's get started on this luxury off-roading three-row SUV. <laughs> okay, guys, so let's review what we need to know about the Land Rover Defender. So they brought this thing back to the States and now they've come back with a couple of versions. We have the 110 and the 130. The 130 is new and it is the longest one with three rows of seating. Let's start by breaking down the front end. Stunning. It's giving Stormtrooper, it's giving Ford Bronco and Ford Flex had a baby and they made a Land Rover Defender. And I don't think anyone at Land Rover is going to like that comparison, but spot the lie. Okay, let's break down the front end. Like I said, I love it. I love all the body on color paint. I think all these like white, like squarey blocks just look so good. And I'm so happy we're finally making SUVs that look like SUVs. Between this, the Bronco, the new Lexus GX that's coming out, or the Honda Pilot, we're finally kind of getting back to those like SUVs that don't look like minivans. You know what I mean? And I'm very much into it. This is so bizarre to me. I never noticed that the Land Rover logo was off centered. Sorry if that's going to ruin your day as well. I just feel like it should be here, right? Crazy. Okay, let's move along to our headlights. And what you're going to see is a beautiful, nice rectangular casing in this black gloss with our LED lights in there. Okay, and then we come along to the side. You guys are going to be able to see just how big this SUV is. I mean, it basically feels like the same size as my Expedition. Um, we have an air suspension right here. So right now we have it all the way up. I will show you how we lower it later. And then we go into some, again, just some beautiful detailing. I think this car in white looks freaking stellar. The white and black contrast is amazing. Something me and my husband both agree on is we think these mirrors are a little small for the car just kind of a hot take. Maybe that's because I feel like you're taking this off-roading, like you don't want to be like hitting things with your mirror. But like for me, I'm just like trying to back out of a parking spot. This could be a little bit bigger in my personal opinion. Okay, let's move on to the rest of the vehicle. And you'll notice right here, we have a big white square. You might be thinking like, Kelly, what the heck is that for? First of all, I can't explain it, but I think it just looks cool. It just looks different and unique, but it's actually, so you could install a ladder right here. So you could like climb on up to like load your cargo and things like that. But in the meantime, it just looks freaking cool, right? Okay, and then here we go, guys. This big, big glass window right here. It's a nice size window. Wait till you see the interior. There is so much natural light that gets let in this vehicle. It's stunning. Okay, and then here we are in the back end where one of my favorite taillights maybe in history. I can't explain it, but I love these two squares with these two baby squares. I think this is such a cool fun design and it, it's so it looks so good with those front lights like the whole car just looks very cohesive the front matches the back the car just looks good we have a full size spare on the back and then if you look down here we've got some nice chrome elements some defender badging so you guys get it like you don't need me to tell you it's a good looking car it's a freaking land rover but you do need me to tell you just how family friendly it is so let's get into the driver's seat all right so here we are in the driver's seat of the land rover defender 130 and let's check out the door so Here's the thing about this vehicle. It's luxury, but don't, don't be mistaken. This is an off-roading rugged vehicle. Look at these exposed bolts right there just to kind of give it a rugged look. Stunning. A nice little side cubby right there. Do the Stanley test. Stanley test is a, is, is a fail, but that's okay because there is so much other like storage and handles in this vehicle. Like every single thing you can like grab onto in one way or the other. Like there are so many, oh crap, handles in this vehicle. It's insane. Love this little cubby right here. What a great little place to like throw a phone, a chapstick, a wallet. We've actually found ourselves using this quite a bit. And then I love all this soft touch material on the top and on the bottom. A kind of fun, inexpensive, different material. Okay, take a look at the steering wheel. So when it's off, it's completely minimal minimalistic. But then when I turn it on, the buttons all appear within here, which I thought was a really cool touch. Kind of unique. Like they're not just printed on there. They're actually in there. Okay. Let's take a look at our screen up here. Um, completely digitalized dash with all the things I love, like seatbelt sensors. So I have two of my kids' car seats installed with seatbelts, and so that's why it's green 
right there. Okay, let me get you on the other side. And I'm going to show you some of the safety features. Okay, and now let's move into the infotainment system. So I don't have a lot of experience with the Land Rover lineup, I'm going to be honest. But I have found the infotainment system to be, for the most part, pretty user-friendly. And if anything else, I just think it looks nice, luxury, and high-end. It's kind of muted. It's kind of giving, like, sad beige life. If you know, you know. But for the most part, like I said, I found it very user-friendly. We're, of course, going to have navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all of those things. And we're also going to have some crazy cameras. So these cameras probably are designed to like go off-roading, but I think they're actually a great safety feature and make parking so easy. I can click this camera button right here and just check out this 3D image I now have of the Defender. My That door is open, which is why it looks black right there. But isn't that freaking cool? Off-roading and even has a camera for your towing as well. This thing can tow, I think, up to... 8,600 pounds. I'll put the exact on the screen right here, but it is a freaking beast. So like I said, I'm liking the entertainment system. It's a split screen right here. So you can see I can quickly click navigation, phone, media, find more of like my compass, more off-roading assistance things. But let's actually get down to here. So what I like about the screen is they've done a good job of minimalizing it, but actually giving me some actual buttons. So this is so cool. If you want to control things like your drive, you hit this button and now I can select which drive mode I want to do. So whether that be grass and gravel, mud ruts, sand, rock crawl, wade, actually going in water, you can do all of that right here. Or it's also my climate control button. So I get you a girl that can do both. And super easy to flip back and forth, which I thought was a really fun feature on Land Rover's part. Okay, let's get to some of the fun stuff the cubby spaces because this car is loaded down with them and i actually found them very very helpful probably my favorite is right here goes completely through the passenger has a ton of storage right here with check this out a USB-C built into it that has been so super handy we have two great size couples we have a stanley and a yeti both no problem fitting and we have some additional storage underneath here with a usb USB-C, and a 12 volt like I said, handles galore. Like you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be slipping and sliding in this car. And then we're going to move into a wireless charging pad right here. I love when wireless charging pads are not like hidden because like you want to like see your phone. Like I hate when you like drop it into the abyss and can't even tell if it's charging. I really like that. Okay, the center console is kind of crazy to me because in the higher trim levels you can actually get the cool box, which would make sense while you have all this wasted space right here. However, we don't have the cool box. So we just have a super small center console. So that's a little bit of a disappointment to me. I'm feeling like either give me a normal center console or always give me the cool box. Like I'm definitely getting the short end of the stick right here. All right, so that's what's going on up here, but let's get to the second row and the third row because I'm gonna show you why I think this is my off-roading pick for families. Okay guys, so I told you this thing is family friendly and this freaking bench seat smacks. I review so many mid-size SUVs and try out so many bench seats, and this Land Rover Defender probably has one of the best. It has, across the bench, two sets of lower anchors, three tethers. In the third row, lower anchors on both outboard seats and tether anchors across the back as well. So you're looking at six sets of tether, six tether anchors and four sets of lower anchors for a vehicle of this size is honestly like probably best in class. Okay, so I have my three kids' car seats installed. I have my daughter, Hattie, in the Kleck Foom behind the driver. My son, George, is in a Gray Coast Limpet LX3 in the center. And then our youngest, Fred, is in this Kleck Ling. We don't have the base because he, the base is with him. But I can tell you we have great clearance with the rear-facing seats. And like I said, a nice wide bench, which could accommodate a ton of three across situations. So if you are looking for an off-roading car that doesn't feel like a family car, and you need to fit three car seats, it's this over the Bronco, it's this over the Wrangler, 100%. Okay, so you guys know I love a good bench seat, and I wanna kind of explain why this Land Rover Defender bench seat has so much to offer. First of all, like I just showed you, it's super wide, so I know it can accommodate a ton of different three across situations. Also, I normally like a bench that, instead of a 60-40 split, is a like three separate seat bench, like we find in the Ford Expedition. This one doesn't have that, but it has something pretty close. So I'll show, start with its first party trick, built-in cup holders. We love to see it, but check this out. These two seats right here are technically connected, right? But you can actually fold down, but you can actually fold down just this middle seat part for third row access, for a place to rest your hands. Now I'm not saying this is like the best way to access the third row, but it's kind of giving faux captain's chairs if you ask me. Let's take a look at the second row and my amenities. So I'm about six feet tall. This seat is set for myself out about six feet tall. Look at this knee clearance. 
great. Also, so much headroom in this vehicle because of this flatter roof. I feel like I'm truly in like a Suburban from this seating position right here. I'm very excited about it. Okay, let's start with the highs. Ceiling vents and vents back here. I love double ventilation for the children. That is a win-win. Uh, some other amenities we have right there are USB C's. I would also have loved to have seen built-in sunshades to this vehicle. I thought that would have also been a really nice um, addition. But check out how cool this is. This like double window right here. Isn't that kind of just a unique touch? I'm telling you, if you, when you're back here, there is so much natural light between these extra large windows, the sunroof. It really feels like such a light, airy car. A few more party tricks on this bench seat because no, I'm not done just yet. So the third row access isn't my favorite. Like it's not a car seat tilt. It feels a little clunky. However, this bench, like I showed you, is so nice and wide that you could have a car seat, a slim car seat installed in the middle and then still have this seat move independently and have third row access. It's not the widest opening. I wish it was wider. Please divert the camera because I don't need this on footage. All right, so here I am in the third row of the Defender. And like I said, this is an eight passenger car. This middle seat though, incredibly tight. I mean, literally like they put the buckles right here. So you're literally sitting on like, sorry, my butt's not that small. It might've used to been, but not anymore. Okay, so the second row seats are on track. So with these seats pushed all the way back, my knees are braced against the back of the seat. However, I have good leg room in the sense where it's like my knees are not coming to my chest and I still have amazing head clearance for a third row vehicle and check out this sunroof also like that is such a fun addition and we have vents right here as well as USB-C's cup holders and little storage bag thing I mean the third row you guys it's just like it's so hard to get out of here that's 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 not it all right let's take a look at the trunk so it is one of those refrigerator doors which I kind of like I don't know, comment below what you think. I probably, if like I had to pick, I prefer the overhead, but if my car looks this cool, I get why that does that. All right, so here's our trunk space with the third row up. It's not stellar. I think it's about 13 cubic feet. I don't have a stroller, but I'm sure it could fit the Zoe double twin, but I would say that's about it. However, you can easily fold these seats flat. It's not power. They go one at a time, which is super unique for a third row to be able to do that, which I thought was really fun. However, they do not lay completely flat. But it's not bad. Like, it's not quite as clunky as the Sequoia. Honestly, it, does, it honestly doesn't bother me that much. This is another cool thing. The vehicle has air suspension. So right now we have it all the way up because, like, this thing's off-roading. But if you want to lower the suspension or you just, like, want to, like, lift something heavy into the vehicle, you can just hit this button right here. Tell her, why don't you come on this side? You can hit this button right here. And the suspension starts to lower. What? Freaking cool, right? All right, y'all, so that's going to wrap up this 2023 Land Rover Defender 130 tour. I am pleasantly surprised. I did not know exactly what to expect. I've toured a Discovery before and wasn't thrilled with it. I can't believe how family friendly and car seat friendly this Defender is. Comment below what you think and what other vehicle tours you want to see next, and I'll see you next time.